hi everyone welcome back to our channel today we are going to discuss about the lead acid batteries and its electrochemistry so let us try to see here what are the different components we have in a lead acid battery so this lead acid battery is used in electric vehicle around 20 years back so coming to the parts so here we are going to have two types of batteries so one is lead acid battery with so you can see this construction so i will explain the construction later so this is the construction of an lead acid battery where the electrolyte used here is nothing but a diluted h2so4 but the lead acid batteries used in electric vehicle are using an a gel type electrolyte which enhances the backup of an lead acid battery now coming to the concept here so here we are going to have the we are going to have two electrodes at negative we are going to have lead which is nothing but lead in shortcut is called as plumbum and at positive electrode we are going to have lead dioxide okay so these are the positive and negative terminals what you have in an electric vehicle battery especially lead acid battery you can see here this is nothing but the positive terminal at positive terminal you are going to have lead dioxide okay so at the positive terminal at the positive plate you are going to have lead dioxide and at negative terminal you are going to have lead okay so here you are going to have lead and here you are going to have lead dioxide these two are separated by an micro porous separator to separate the positive as well as the to separate the negative as well as the positive you have an uh, micro porous separated uh, and each are having a uh, grid for the flow of uh, liquid which is called as a uh, grid plate so now here we are having positive and here you are having the negative and like this is combination will be there okay so between uh, positive terminal as well as the negative terminal you are going to have a uh, micro porous separator which <coughs> follows so in between this you can see here combination so all these negative positive terminals are joined which gives a cascade of positive terminal which is called as a positive cell connection all these negative plates are joined which is going to generate a negative terminal and here it is going to generate a completely positive and all these positive electrode and negative electrode is kept in an electrolyte which is called as a dilute h2so4 so all this pack will act like an positive positive terminal as well as the negative terminal and this will be present in this container so you can see here like this all the positive will be bought out and all the negatives will be bought out so where at this positive you are going to have lead dioxide terminals where you are going to have the lead okay so you can see all this packing is done so in order to so each cell so this cell will generate two volts so this is like a cell one cell two cell 3, cell 4, cell 5, cell 6. Let us assume that each cell is generating 2 volts. Like this, how many cells we generally have in a lead acid battery? Let us assume that this is the output voltage or terminal voltage. So whenever the current is leaving, the leaving terminal is plus 2 and here the leaving terminal is plus 2, here the leaving terminal is plus 2 and here it is plus 2, plus 2, so plus 2 and the current enters at positive and it leaves at negative which is nothing but minus v equal to 0 if you add all this you are going to get 2 into 6 which is nothing but 12 volts is equal to v so the resultant voltage which available across the terminals of the battery is nothing but 12 volts this is the general case so between these two terminals we are going to get after the addition of the cell after the series connection of the cell you are going to get 12 volts so you can see here the cell divider uh, which is nothing but uh, at negative we have lead and at positive we have lead dioxide and this is the cell divider and this is nothing but dilute h2 4 so this lead acid battery or generally uh, electric vehicle applications uh, we use a gel type of uh, electrolytes so now coming to the chemical recombination so already as we discussed we have lead at negative terminal and we have lead dioxide at positive terminal and it is immersed in an 
electrolyte which is H2SO4 which is nothing but sulfuric acid. Okay. So this undergoes the, so now we are trying to analyze the performance of the battery when the battery is discharging. So when it undergoes discharging, it undergoes the combination of lead sulfate which is nothing but Pb so forth okay so these two parts get attracted to form a precipitate which is called as s2 so4 this is in the form of an precipitate so this is in the form of an precipitate or like a solid material and it is going to have the one more component which is nothing but h2o and the output is nothing but energy so here some electrons are released which make the electricity to flow. Now the battery is in the case of discharging. So now this is the case. Now when you coming to the balancing, here we are having PB. So how many PBs are there? Here lead I am having, the weight of lead is 2 but here the weight of lead is only 1. That's why I am keeping 2 here. Now the weight of lead is also 2. I can say that the weight of lead is balanced. Now when you keep the 2 here, so lead is 2 and sulphur is also 2. Here the weight of sulphur is now 2 but the weight of sulphur is only 1 here. So that's why I am scaling 2 times. So when I scale it 2 times, here also the weight of sulphur is 2 and here also the weight of sulphur is 2, it is balanced. Okay. So coming to the hydrogen balance, so here a hydrogen is of uh, weight of uh, 4 and coming to here hydrogen is of only 2. You multiply with 2 automatically here the weight of hydrogen is also 4 here it is also 4 here it is also 4 coming to the oxygen atoms balancing this is uh, 2 here this is nothing but uh, 2 plus 4 2s are 8 so total oxygen atom weight is uh, 10 here and coming to the weight here 4 into 2 8 plus 2 which is nothing but oxygen atom weight is also 10 so I can say that the equation is completely balanced Okay. So, just uh, the positive electrode is there, negative electrode is there, it is inserted in an H2SO4 to form an precipitate of PbSO4 and H2SO4. You can see here, so resultantly when it is discharging, what is there? PbSO4 is there and output when it is discharging, what is released? Water is released and this is nothing but uh, the balanced equation and here you are going to get. Now, we are keeping the charging of the battery. When you start charging the battery, it flows in opposite direction. So here you have lead sulphate and here you have water. So when it undergoes the charging automatically, it is going to once again create a sulfur, I mean a sulfuric acid and at negative you are going to have lead dioxide and at positive you are going to have lead dioxide and negative you are going to have lead. So this is the case whenever the battery is charging. So this is how the lead acid battery charges and lead acid battery discharges of its own okay so this is what the we call this kind of recombination as a chemical equations or this is called as a, since electricity is involved this is called as a electrochemistry equations okay so lead plus lead dioxide and it undergoes an electrolyte of h2so4 in between them when it is discharging, it is trying to develop a precipitate of lead dioxide. Okay, so now in the case of discharging, it we are having a precipitate of lead, I mean lead sulfate, okay, as a precipitate form. But the same lead sulfate is also there. Now the battery from this point it has discharged and reached 10 percentage. Now, what is the change rate of charge of the battery? 10 0 percentage, and we need to charge it to 100 percentage. Therefore, what we are going to perform is we are going to charge the battery when you are charging the battery automatically the lead sulfate undergoes the electrochemical balance electrochemical decomposition and once again it creates a h2so4 and now the battery is fully charged you can understand that it is having an high concentrated it is having a full concentration of h2so4 okay so that's why uh, you should not keep your batteries in the living room why because this undergoes continuous chemical reactions and it will develop uh, the dangerous gases like uh, H2SO4. So that's why in the living room where you have ACs or different places, uh, we should not keep these kind of batteries uh, which will hurt your health. Okay. So this is all about uh, the electrochemistry of a uh, lead acid battery. And coming to the 
नेक्स्ट इक्वेशन है सो लेट्स ट्राई टू सी सम व्हाट आर द बैटरी पैरामीटर्स ऑफ एन लेड एसिड बैटरी सो लेट्स ट्राई टू सी हियर ऑलरेडी वी हैव बीन स्टडीड डिफरेंट पैरामीटर्स ऑफ ए बैटरी लेट्स ट्राई टू सी हियर नॉमिनल बैटरी पैरामीटर्स फॉर एन लेड एसिड battery already we have been studied the specifications of the battery so let's try to recall them so first specification is specific energy already discussed this energy so energy is nothing but what our specific is nothing but kg for 1 kg of battery weight how much amount of energy it can be stored and this varies from 20 to 25 watt hour okay 22 to 25 watt hour per kg so it can store an energy of 25 watt hour per 1 kg of battery weight so second specification of a lead acid battery is nothing but energy density okay already we discussed this energy density so this is nothing but how much amount of energy it can store in a volume of 1 meter cube so for a lead acid battery it varies from 454 to 95 Watt hour by meter cube. Okay, so it can store about ninety-five watt hour per meter cube. This is the energy density of an lead acid battery. So coming to the third specification. Specific power. Okay, so what is the specific power? Okay, so the specific power. So this is nothing but already i discussed power can be expressed as a watt specific means it is clearly defined which is nothing but per kg so this value varies in a value of 250 watt of power it can store for a weight of 1 kg where this is called the specific power next one what is the nominal cell voltage of an battery so which is nothing but nominal cell voltage of a battery so every cell voltage will be having 2 volts per individual cell okay so this is the nominal cell voltage of an battery so fifth specification is nothing but ampere hour efficiency already i discussed this is nothing but ampere hour efficiency is nothing but ampere hour rating of a battery while it is in the case of a discharge divided by the ampere hour rating of a battery while in the case of a charging already this efficiency is defined generally we define efficiency as a output power to the input power here output is nothing but battery discharge here input is nothing but charging so when you define the ampere hour rating so this will be varied as a 80 percentage so how to write down the 80 percent is so i am discharging the battery of up to a capacity of 8 ah and i am charging it to a capacity of 8 ah so it's nothing but 8 by 10 into 100 8 by 10 is 0.8 into 100 therefore the efficiency of this lead acid battery is approximately 80 percentage so this is the efficiency of an lead acid battery so sixth specification is nothing but what is the internal resistance of an so internal resistance of an lead acid battery so this will be in the range range of 0.022 ohms per cell so we have six cell if you multiply with six we are going to get the r internal okay so this is nothing but so each cell it has an resistance of 0.022 ohms so next one coming to the commercial availability of the battery so this uh, lead acid but the type of uh, electrolyte is generally is nothing but gel type of electrolyte this is readily available in the manufacture and this technology is uh, already available in the market so this technology is uh, already available in the market so this lead acid so this is nothing but h2so4 in the form of uh, gel so these batteries are generally used for uh, no license so no license 
category of uh, EVs. Okay, so the vehicles wind run with less than forty kilometers per hour for all these type of uh, no license electric vehicle and non registration electric vehicle. Uh, this lead acid battery is used. And coming to the operating temperature. Okay, so next one is operating temperature. So the operating temperature. Of the battery is generally recommended as a 25 degrees Celsius. So it gives a poor performance. I mean, the performance is very very poor when you operate in extreme cold conditions. Okay. So when you operate it in negative negative temperature, so this will give very very poor performance. You should have uh, while some batteries are hot batteries and some batteries are cold batteries. At starting they require high temperature, but whenever they start running, you have to reduce. The temperature, but normal batteries we recommend you have to maintain a temperature of 25 degrees, such a way that it can deliver required amount of life, okay, which is nothing but life cycles. So next specification is nothing but self discharge rate, okay. Self discharge rate of an lead acid battery. Self discharge battery is is nothing but if a battery is not used for long time, it discharges or the battery. Discharge of its own, where this is called as a self discharge rate, and it varies with a percentage of two percentage of charging is discharge per day. So per day, two percent of battery is discharge. If you are not used for one day, two percentage it discharges. Since if you use or if you don't use, okay. So if you keep it idly also, it will discharge to an two percentage of a battery in an electric vehicle. So this is about. Self discharge is nothing but how a battery discharges of its own. So of its own, it discharges. That's called self discharge rate of an battery. So tenth parameter is nothing but uh, the number of life cycles of an battery. Okay. What is meant by an life cycle? Already disclosed. Disclosed. So one charging and one discharge of a battery is called as a life cycle. Is lead acid battery has a life cycles of a uh, Varying up to thousand cycles. So thousand cycles means uh, how we can consider is uh, so this lead acid battery may give maximum backup of three years uh, if we use per day one cycle. So per day you should charge your EV once and you should charge your battery once. So per day one cycle. If we use in this uh, proportion, automatically it can perform well. So in three sixty five days. How many cycles? Three sixty-five cycles. Three sixty-five into three, approximately one thousand one hundred cycle. So, this lead acid battery can do a maximum thousand cycles or one thousand one hundred cycles or maximum backup of three years. That is all about the lead acid battery. And coming to the recharge time, that's why these batteries are not recommendable. So, what is the rechargeable? Time of an lead acid battery approximately it may take eight hours to make a battery as full if you use fast charging also. That is why these lead acid batteries are not used in an licensed vehicle. So we have licensed electric vehicle. So what you see on the market or what you see on the road is nothing but Vola S1 Pro and TVS. IQ models, as well as your uh, remaining vehicles uh, like uh, Ather 450X, and these are the top selling brands. They don't use uh, uh, this lithium-ion batteries, especially the gel type also. Why? Because we need to charge the battery 80% within half an hour or within one hour. So to support fast charging, we need to have a battery which has high energy density, which has high uh, specific energy and specific power. So that's why. Lead acid batteries are not suitable for an licensed EV. This is suitable only for non-licensed. Okay. So in our channel, we have a set of videos we have done on licensed reviews on licensed vehicle on non-licensed vehicle. You can have a small look on this. These non-licensed vehicles require a normal type of lithium-ion battery, which is nothing but the electrolyte is nothing but a gel type H2SO4 is used as a Electrolyte. Yeah. So these batteries are only suitable for non-licensed vehicle. So where the they take more time to charge. 
so that's why these vehicles are the popular vehicles used in non license category so that's why this is all about uh, the lead acid battery electrochemistry so if you have any doubts let me know in the comment section this is very simple to understand you have an positive electrode negative electrode i am just giving a small glance you have positive electrode negative electrode separated by an micro pore is separated all these negatives are joined and all these positives are joined this is called positive terminal and negative terminal like this you have cell 1 cell 2 cell 3 cell 4 cell 5 cell 6 so six cells are there all these six cells will generate an output voltage of 12 volts and this is the electrochemical equations while in the case of charging as well as discharging okay so this is how the by products of lead sulfate is formed whenever it is discharging and these are the by products when it is going to charge okay so this is all about the chemical equations this means is the battery parameters of an lead acid battery how much specific energy it is uh, offering how much energy density the values so specific power nominal cell voltage of 2 volts so the sort of system voltage when you connect them in series is nothing but 12 volts is going to produce uh, and where this uh, efficiency it is going to offer is approximately 80 percentage uh, and these lead acid batteries are not suitable uh, for an up electric vehicle applications uh, where we require uh, licensed okay so licensed electric vehicle use lithium ion battery where a non licensed electric vehicle use an lead acid battery so this lead acid batteries are most suitable only to non licensed electric vehicle where it gives the required amount or low cost electric vehicle so this lead acid battery has struggled with the problem of the charging time is too high okay around you can see the charging time is 8 hours that's why these batteries are not recommendable for high speed vehicles as well as for licensed vehicle so this is all about the lithium ion battery in the next chapter we'll try to discuss about how to charge this battery and what are the different remaining types of lithium ion battery and nickel cadmium category of batteries which will help us to understand more about the batteries of an electric vehicle if you feel the content is really useful to you please like the content please share with your friends and if you have any doubts let me know in in comment session so please if you are watching the channel for the first time please subscribe to the channel and this is a free channel and we never make this a commercial so this is a free channel useful to the public so please try to encourage this sort of free channel which help us to do more useful videos to the public so hope the content is very useful we will meet in the next lecture video of the next category of battery thanking you viewers obediently we we'll meet in the next session thank you students for watching